What's going on YouTube? It's Chris here from Friendly Frenzy Games and today I'm going to walk you through a few tips as well as my setup and plan for achieving the Streets Ahead Rare Steam Achievement in Pacific Drive in hopes that the, it'll help you collect this one too. Now this achievement has only been unlocked by 5% of Steam's player base and as a quick overview for this trophy you're going to need to complete a single run with at least 7 junctions. What this means is that you're going to need to have visited at least seven different maps, successfully link a gateway, and escape through it back to the auto shop without dying to unlock this achievement. With the proper planning, this achievement really isn't all that difficult, but it can take some time to get the ideal sequence of maps. Now to start, I would highly suggest attempting this when you've got your scanning antenna fully upgraded to level 3 as it's going to give you the maximum number of charges possible to open up the greatest number of junctions and plot potential exits. Now I would also highly suggest having the junction restabilizer module installed into the root planner projector so that you're able to reroll any potential conditions that might slow down your progress in unlocking this achievement. As I mentioned before, the key to unlocking this trophy is truly in the preparation, so you're definitely going to want to take your time here. To start, you're going to want to count out at least 7 junctions that are linked together by roadways. This is to ensure that you're able to travel to each one of these successfully from the junction preceding it. Now as you might be able to see here, my initial plan was to go from E7 to G9, then to E6 to C4, and then up to A9. A2 and finally ending on A1. Now I personally found it easiest to count out the number of junctions that I would need from the auto shop but then actually place my end destination first and then work my way back. So as a tip here the first time that I tried to complete this achievement I used the well map as my exit. I actually ended up finishing the entire route just to find out that you can't actually leave from the well after completing it in the story so as a note do not use the well as your final map as you're not going to be able to collect anchor energy or escape from here. Now obviously knowing that this was going to be a long trip I decided to outfit my car with as many items to give me increased fuel and battery capacity. This is so that I could drive for as long and far as possible. I also tried to gear up as much as I could to negate the damage from the primarily physical, explosive, and acid based anomalies that I would have faced along my intended route by using a combination of Olympium and anti-corrosive car components. Then I replaced my rear bumper with a limb shield to gain additional physical protection and I added an ion shield to my roof rack for substantial radiation damage reduction while these abilities were active. Finally, to ensure that I was able to perform any necessary fixes on the fly in the zone, I stuffed my trunk storage full of mechanic kits, sealant kits, blow torches, plasma chargers, repair putty, battery jumpers, and a large fuel can full of gas. Since my car was now fully outfitted, it was time to hit the road and start my route. So my initial plan here was to only gather anchors that I would cross along my path in each one of these junctions. Honestly, I wasn't too concerned as I knew in my later maps I had a lot of time before the storm set in, and there was also a lot of anchor energy in these later maps. Obviously though, in an ideal world, I'd have enough energy to link a gateway and escape as soon as I reached the final map, so that was always in the back of my mind. Now the biggest tip that I have for this is to know how much energy you're going to need to escape your end map and then definitely how much energy each one of these junctions along your route are expected to have. There's honestly nothing worse than getting to the end of this and not having collected enough energy to open a gateway or needing to collect too much while fighting against the strong radiation of a swift storm. Now, I actually had to call an audible pretty early on in my route after the G9 junction because the game didn't let me jet out to E9 on my right. I could only go to the left and G1. Now, in my head, I knew I couldn't go backwards, but I did think that I would have been able to go sideways in both directions. I believe I was actually blocked to E9 because once you leave a sector, you can't backtrack even if it's a different junction and they are linked by a roadway. In my specific case, this happened when I traveled out of Sector E after leaving E7 and into G9. So a tip here is to definitely keep that in mind while you're planning your route, is to stay within your same sector because once you leave, you cannot come back. 
Ultimately, though, this really didn't divert me too much. It just meant that I would need to go to C5 through G1 instead of C4 through E6. But this did happen to be an unstable map that I did not account for. With the setup out of the way and being well on our way of the route, having started the route and navigating the detour, it was really just to stick to my plan of only collecting the energy that I passed that was close by, and then collect more on the later maps where and when I knew I had time before the storm approached. Once I got to the last map, I was able to quickly link the gateway early and retreat safely back to the auto shop to pop the streets ahead achievement. Now I'm hoping that this video was able to help you. If it did, be sure to give it a like and drop a comment. If you really liked it, consider subscribing to Friendly Frenzy Games for much more gaming content.